For twice the price, is it twice as nice? I'm Jay. I'm Steph. And this is Modern Motoring. I can't be blamed for being hungry. I can't be blamed for craving more than I am. So I guess it's Toyota Day. It is Toyota Here Day. Modern Motoring. <laughs> We've got at our disposal two sports cars from the Toyota brand that are not Toyota sports cars. <laughs> it says Toyota on the steering yes. wheel, front and back. But yes, they're both joint projects, Toyota with BMW for Supra and Toyota with Subaru yep. for what we're in right now, which is the GR86. If you're ever confused between which car we're in, black for the 86 and red for the Supra. And we sit in the one that we prefer for each section that we talk about in our comparison. So no shade. To Toyota right off the top whatsoever for these collaborations that have brought these sports cars to us. I know some people give them a hard time about it. Oh, just leave Toyota alone. We're just glad right? they make them. Honestly, yeah. like it, it makes a lot of sense. The reason that they do it is because low volume cars, it has to make financial sense. And so right. and splitting the, the engineering development work with another automaker keeps it affordable. They put their own touches on it. It's yeah, we're we're fully on board. We Absolutely. love that it's just, this is a thing that's important to Toyota as a brand. So, thank you for your commitment to enjoyable driving and a manual transmission. Yeah, the right. Which is what we're driving right here. So, but we're going to get to that in a minute mm -hmm. and start our comparison with the um, exterior comparison on these two cars. And as you can see, we're sitting in the GR86. This is going to be a contentious one, I feel, among the comments. Okay. But do you want to start? I do want. Okay, start. go for it. I'd like to start. It is so aggressive and mean looking. And By yes, it, I, you mean the Supra? No, this. This, this. Oh, okay. This. Just a, it is. It's sort of, yeah. It's to throw a, f a different manufacturer into the mix, um, it has the J Blade style Jaguar Day Runners. I love that. Uh -huh. And they just swoop around. It looks so, what's the word you used in the main review? Menacing. Yes. Yeah, I think that is an ideal word for exactly mm -hmm. what this is. Um, I don't really care for the spoiler, but it's got a nice little profile. But the front end for this completely makes it free. Well, you can get it without that spoiler. The duckbill spoiler yeah. is a premium uh, upgrade on the GR86 and is not offered on the BRZ at all. So that's one of those Toyota touches that if it I speaks know, to you, then it's there. But I like there. everything else in the premium except the spoiler. But um, overall, I like the looks. I like the rims. I like the rim uh, design. I like the small gap between wheel arches I would change nothing as far as what's in the 86 as is right now appearance wise on the outside you mean yeah yeah um, I agree there's a lot that's similar all the side panels and everything are similar to the BRZ right um, so but I think it's a clean look um, I really like it it's exactly what a little 2 by 2 coupe should look like mm -hmm. the Supra it, it, yeah. This is going to be contentious. Everybody's yeah. got an opinion about what they Fair. think about the super, the, the modern Supra's design. It's got a lot going on for me. I'm not sure I love the, the nose especially. It's sort of like that that it's F1, past F1 kind of rounded, like, yeah, I'm not, not really my thing. The great big hips and... Eh. That's the thing. Just, it's too... It's too round. It's still aggressive. It still looks very sports car-ish, but it's... Give me simple and plain here as opposed to big long massive hoods and like you're saying the big hips all around yeah i'm not sure plain is even the way i describe it it's just not outlandish all right yeah i want to stick with plain okay mostly because we're by an airport not plain like your chicken wings don't you <laughs> ever <laughs> The reason we've put this comparison together is not to say that we think that one of these cars is better than the, the other. We know they each serve their own audience yep. and they have their own purpose and intention and that's fine. What we're here to answer the question of today though is because we have both of these cars at our disposal at once, we want, we want to know, is the Supra's just over $70,000 price tag worth the literally double the um, the price tag on the GR86 Premium with the manual transmission that we're driving right now. So that's the that's the question that we're here to answer for you. And let's get into it. As you can see, we've changed cars, we've changed seating positions, and that is to indicate that we are in on the interior section of our comparison. And this is the car that we're deciding we prefer being the Supra. 
by leaps, bounds, and then <laughs> some. Uh, the seats are incredibly comfortable. They are. They're so supportive. plush. Yeah. It, the color is a nice gimmicky thing. Mm. Like I love the way the red looks and how it's oh, lined on the I steering wheel. I absolutely love it. Um, you could give this to me in zigzag, polka dot, <laughs> whatever color. Um, but as long as the material and support is the same, mm -hmm. I'm all in. No, I'm completely with you on that. I mean, we're all the way at the point of carbon fiber inserts here. And, yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah. Wireless charging. There's uh, a lot of BMW going on in here in terms of the switch gear and that sort of thing. Fine by and, me. I mean, like that's it. versus the switch gear in the in the GR86, which is very much like the Subaru switch gear from the BRZ. Right. So you're getting what you're paying for a lot in that respect. Absolutely. And I know you're not a big fan of this, but that's okay because I am. Yeah. Um, this is a Toyota through and through. Um, a lot of people just throw the interchangeable names around, mm -hmm. but this has an iteration of BMW's iDrive controller, which is my favorite one yes. in the modern automotive market. Right. I guess I know you like the touch screen and you do have a touch screen here. Yes. Same shape, a lot smaller, but I will always use their rotary control, we'll call mm -hmm. it, it's a sure. nice neutral name. Um, here's something we both like. Mm -hmm. Still has the eight preset yes. buttons, which is, oh, good job, yeah. good job on that. You go first on the dashboard because I've got a little more to say. I I'm sure you probably do. I think it's a little bit big to read in spots. Okay, um, one for one. For yeah, us. Yep. The, um, the gear, it takes up really valuable space that really ought yeah. to be used for something else. Um, and the two gauges, the temperature gauge and the, um, the fuel gauge on the two sides, I don't, they're not very intuitive. You get, to, you, you get used to them after owning the car for a while, but. Right, and yeah. I would rather have the middle of the dashboard where it's your gear indicator be your speedometer yeah and i agree completely just flip it like you said it's when you're doing highway speeds 1 110 120 um, to me i want that information front center yeah. and just very pronounced and present i agree with you now there is a head-up display in this one though which uh, makes up for that somewhat do you use your head-up display i do constantly really? yeah i know lots of people who really despise them but um i actually use it the majority of the time when it's present. Oh, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Uh, as far as things being in reach for you, with the cup holders kind of beside slash behind you? Uh, well, I mean, they're behind in the GR86 as well, so right. maybe a little bit less so in this. Um, makes a good space for them to make room for that manual transmission that's coming, because you don't want <laughs> stuff up ahead of that, right? So. It's almost like they knew. <laughs> Feature level isn't quite as high as it could be in this versus the GR86. There are heated seats, no ventilated seats. Um, there is a wireless charging pad in this, mm -hmm. which there isn't in the GR86. So again, you're getting what you're pay for paying for there. Right. Is there anything else that would warrant double the price for you on the interior for this? It's a lot quieter. Oh, it leaps bounds. Yeah. And it just it's like, somebody hit, it's like somebody hit the mute button mm -hmm. in here. Um, yeah. And even at highway speeds, it's still relatively quiet. Now, we should point out that the reason the camera is mounted there is not us being creative. We couldn't actually get it to fit between the, <laughs> <laughs> the rear view mirror and the infotainment yeah. screen. So um, those are quite tight. Um, not as bad for visibility on that as in the rear quarters though which like yeah use you your can't mirrors. see yeah you yeah. need to be able to use your mirrors and your backup camera to be to get around in this thing because uh, there's nothing going on in the back half of this cabin for you visibility wise yeah. it's a fair bit better in the gr86 with the bigger window this is the performance section of our comparison and yes we are sitting in the gr86 and yeah. we're we have a reason or a few reasons for it, but mm -hmm. bear with us. Let's quickly run down the numbers and performance. Right. So here in the GR86 is Subarus tuned by Toyota, 2.4 liter, horizontally opposed four cylinder, cylinder engine. Mm -hmm. They call those boxers in Subaru land. Mm -hmm. uh, that is 228 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque that peaks at 3,700 RPM. That is delightfully wow. low. Of what it was last generation. It was, That's correct. I think you said it was 66. 66 is where it peaked in RPM in the last generation. Someone so. give those engineers a raise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's energetic. It's sprightly. This is an extremely light car, uh, mm. just over 1,200 kilos or just under, or just over 2,800 pounds. Right. Uh, so it's just, it's a lot of fun to whip around. Rear wheel drive. 
Um, and it's mm-hmm. got, yeah, the um, double wishbone rear suspension and uh, Torsen, the limited slip rear differential. So What's to dislike? Not a whole lot. Not You're getting a, a heck lot. of a lot of value yeah. for performance out of this thing from all that. Um, the Super is no slouch either. No. Now, no. we went to look up whether the two liter is still available or still on the website for Toyota Canada. The 2022 is not there. And we're in early June. Yes. Now, there are specs floating around for the 23, so we're pretty sure it's coming back next model year. They right. may have just pulled it because they've automakers are pulling things left and right for oh. lack of availability right yeah. now. So um, that and that manual transmission that we've been promised in the Supra um, is uh, something that's coming up. And actually, let's touch on that before we move on back through the rest of the Supra specs, because here we've got this six-speed manual right. in the GR86, and it's brilliant. Such a great manual transmission all around. The short throws, and it's notchy, and you feel it. There's no missed gear. You can activate the gear upshift selector, mm-hmm. if you like. Um, I don't mind keeping it on. I, do you? I use it. Yeah. yeah. Some people don't. There's no That's shame. Fine. No, <laughs> there, there's not. Sometimes <laughs> there's a lot of road noise around and you forget which gear you're in because you can't hear the revs or whatever. Yeah. And it, it's handy. Yeah. And uh, a nice bite point on the clutch. Mm-hmm. It's just, it's, and all the pedals are spaced nicely. And some manuals, actually only mini, strangely enough, I cannot sit all the way back because I right. can't reach the pedals. Every other car, I'm fine with that. Right. Um, but with this, my seating position is great. The eight-speed automatic in the Supra is snappy. It's mm. it's very quick. Um, I prefer the visceral feel of rowing my own gears, but I'm old that way. We're old that way. Yeah. Um, that's I, why they're bringing a manual uh, because enough right? of us complain. <laughs> <laughs> How could you make a car like this? Um, so I'm going to say that the 86 screams, mm-hmm. but the super growls. Fair. Um, I like that description. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. Like, let me hear all the revs. And let me feel all the road noise mm-hmm. in everything. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm i curious as to what the Supra's manual will be like Yeah. with an asterisk. We kind of know. Yeah. Um, but we don't know what it's like with that specific configuration and the right. weight and the design and all that. Um, what, if they offer us one, we're not going to turn it down to test drive it. Let's put it that way. All for research purposes. Right, right? of course, All always. For <laughs> um, anyway, back to the power specs and, and the uh, powertrain configuration in the Supra. So right. that is the uh, three liter in line six mm-hmm. in that with a single scroll turbocharger and power specs of 382 horsepower, 368 pound feet of torque. If you've heard that before from any other BMW engine, yeah. that's fine. And if you're going to pick anything from BMW to power a Supra, that's the engine I'd pick. Fair enough, yeah, yeah nearly, absolutely. Nearly 400s, it does everything it's supposed to. Yep. Um, quick little side note, so I'm in fourth gear doing 62. Yeah. It's loud and it's at 2750 for the right. RPMs. Really, really quick um, gear ratios on yeah. the bottom end of this. This, the, we're talking about the GR86 now. Yeah. Gets I, you just up to the, the speed really quickly from through the low end. It's uh, If you're planning to whip this around in second, third, fourth gear um, on a tight little track, this is going to, you're going to love this car. Everything about the, the Supra's powertrain is worth the money. Mm-hmm. Um, but one thing that's a significant differentiator versus this is that adaptive suspension in the, in the yeah. Supra. It really makes a difference. This is not awful, but it is stiff. Right. And, you know, for for the money, that's you, you have to expect that. You can't expect miracles out of a, tr- um, a suspension at $40,000 or less, right? Right. Um, whereas for 70 in that in the Supra, you're getting that gorgeous adaptive suspension, and it really does smooth things out beautifully. Oh, it does. Yeah, um, especially on these awful Canadian roads that are barely maintained. But not Mississauga. We have the best roads ever. No? no? How much were you paid to say that? <laughs> This is not sponsored by the city. Right, of exactly. <laughs> where do we land on this one? I know, I know where I land on. I think I know where you do too. Is there room on your island for me? <laughs> um, the question to loop back mm-hmm. is not which is the better car. We know right. which is the better car. It's is the Supra worth twice the money? I don't see it. Mm. I I just I can't go above fifty mm. for the Supra for all that it is. And I know that it's worth and it's got value and I know all the things, Yeah. but with this specific comparison, is it worth twice as much? Not to me. Mm-hmm. I would, even if I had the $70,000, 
to buy the Supra, I'd buy two of these. <laughs> I, I love this car so much. Let me guess, they would both be manual. Uh, of course they would. <laughs> and they would both have different interiors. Right, um, exactly. Now, if you want to learn a little bit more in detail about the GR86, we have reviewed it recently in full detail. So go and check out that full review if, uh, if you want to learn more details about this, because this is a second generation completely redesigned for 22 so you might want more details on that before you go and buy two like I'm not going to because I don't have seventy thousand dollars lying around um, but thank you so much for watching and uh, let us know in the comments if you agree or disagree well, we don't have to ask you to we know you'll you let know us you know. Will. that's why yeah. we love you exactly and while we're at it don't forget to subscribe mm -hmm. so that you can comment and regularly catch our videos so that uh, you can be part of our community we'd love to have you join us it's true we would